I love to climb. It's when I feel most comfortable and excited. I was nine years old when I was diagnosed with epilepsy, and quite honestly, this sucked. My self-confidence went through the floor, and it was a real struggle. But being in the mountains really got me through this difficult patch. I then set myself a goal, and at 15, I stood on the roof of Africa with chilly toes and not much air in my lungs. I'd caught the climbing bug, and I couldn't wait to get back home and start preparing for the next mountain. During this process, I was fortunate enough to be chosen to join Mike Horn, the famous explorer, on the Pangaea expedition to the Himalaya. We did research on the Baltora Glacier on how climate change is affecting the mountainous region, and then climbed a 6,000-meter virgin peak, which was just madness. The Himalayas showed me how much I loved feeling small and insignificant in, in the big mountains and how I wanted to protect them. I got back home, but I barely had time to breathe because 10 days later I was off on another adventure to Mount Elbrus in Russia, Europe's highest peak. It was grueling, a 20-hour summer day, and it was everything that I wanted, but to get to the summit, uh, Elbra showed me a different side to mountaineering, uh, a darker side. We made it, and it was like we were in a blizzard, it was crazy, but to get to that point, my climbing partner almost died because of some irresponsible decisions he made to push for the summit. We spent about 10 hours trying to get him off the mountain back to camp, and while I was studying my uh, bruised and battered feet, I started to notice things. These camps are full of trash, and there seems to be an idea that because you pay to be on the mountain, that you deserve to be at the summit. And, and it's disgusting. So I face a dilemma. How do I keep climbing big, beautiful mountains around the world, but do it in a way which is responsible and sustainable? So, Cape to Kenya was born. Now, Cape to Kenya, I did it in 2012, and it was the first of a series of environmental expeditions that I've been doing. It was all to climb one big, beautiful mountain, Mount Kenya, but we wanted to do it in a different way. So, Mount Kenya is the second highest in Africa, and it's, it's like a climber's paradise, steep and stunning, but we wanted to get there by not flying. We wanted to get there with a low environmental impact. So we hitchhiked, we caught buses, trains, walked a lot of the way, and cycled bits of it. And that was how we were going to get 14,000 kilometers there and back. But I also felt that we needed to contribute to the communities we were going through. So I, well, me and some friends created some programs to promote sustainability within one's community, as well as using the adventure to stimulate appreciation for, you know, kids' own current environments. The workshops were a success. It was, it was, it, it was such a beautiful experience, and we worked with over 600 kids in Zambia, Malawi, and and it was just so wonderful to get to these mountains, but do it in a different way. And then we arrived in Mount Kenya, and we were carrying 40 kgs, each of us, up into altitude. We were on the mountain for about 12 days, and we had a serious epic where, on the summit day, nicely and exposed above the clouds, but we didn't take enough water or food for the amount of time we were up there. We had water for two days, and food for one, and we were out there for three and a half days. So it was a bit of a, 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 a difficult trip, but we made the summit, and we had done it in this way, and I was so revved up to start, you know, to just jump into the next one, um, which was Cape to Atacama that I did last year. Now, I was a bit arrogant going into the next trip, and overly excited. So I put a year of my life into preparing for this trip that would go all the way across to South America 
follow the same ethos as Cape to Kenya. Um, but two years before departure date, it all fell apart. Our main sponsor pulled out. We lost the boat to get to South America. And then, you know, I didn't have a partner either. But I wasn't going to let this stop me. So I went around marinas around Cape Town, and I started looking for a way to get there, just asking random people. And then I met a crew that I had no idea if they were friend or foe. And six days after that, I left for South America with no real plan. It had gone out the window, and it was terrifying. After a month of sailing on a sea with some very odd characters, I arrived in Brazil, and I started trekking and, and just hustling my way through to climb in Bolivia and Peru, where I did four 6,000-meter peaks, which were all so splendid. I didn't, however, have any money. Like I said, I didn't have a sponsor. I was just going into my own savings. And I eventually ran out of money in, in Peru, and I had to get a job. But Cape to Atacama was a bit of a mess up in many respects, but it's an adventure that I will never take back. And what I love about the My Cape expeditions is that, you know, I didn't need that much money. I didn't need to make it that complicated. Basically, you can just jump on a bike, catch a bus, or just start walking, and you can create your own adventure. So thank you so much, and uh, yes. <laughs>